Hey everyone, welcome to the Be Bold, Make Waves podcast, a show bringing you inspiring stories of women who are growing and scaling their business. I'm your host, Laura Comark, a website and tech integration specialist who works with online business owners who love their work and not their website. Join me as we have incredible conversations about business, mindset, productivity, and of course, the website and tech behind the business. Let's go ahead and dive in to this week's episode. Hello and welcome to today's show. For those of you who don't already know me, I'm Laura Comark, a website and tech automation specialist who works with women who love their work, but not their website. I'm so excited to introduce you to my very good friend, Amanda Kuklins. Amanda is the founder of Momentum Up Marketing, a boutique ads management agency for coaches, course creators, and consultants who want to reach the next level in their business. There are a million and one things you could be doing in your business right now, but worrying about your paid ad strategy shouldn't be one of them. Instead, Amanda and her team will guide you through the entire process of planning, setting up, and managing your Facebook and Instagram ads so you can avoid the tech overwhelm and dizzying Google spiral. Plus, they provide a completely customized, high-touch experience that feels right for you and your business. Amanda, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Can you tell our listeners just a little bit more about how you got into your business? Sure. Well, thanks for having me, Laura. I am super excited to be here. Um, well, let's see a uh, little bit about me and my business. Um, my name is Amanda. Obviously you have that already. I am owner of Momentum Up Marketing. I have, uh, established Momentum Up Marketing in 2017. Um, I, I did that because I, um, was a stay at home mom, but before I had had my kids, I was in like, I have a degree in marketing circa 1998. Like we're talking a long time ago, um, before all this, you know, real internet boom really even happened. So, um, I worked corporate for a lot of years and I've always felt super passionate about marketing. And so when I, um, when I had my second child in 2010, I, um, you know, got, you know, quit my job and decided to stay home with the two kids. And it was just my numbing. <laughs> and so I would pick up little side jobs and things like that, but I wanted to also own my own business. So thus momentum up marketing. And I'm also a pretty avid runner or I used to be. Um, and so at that time, like running momentum, that sort of thing, that is kind of how um, that came to be. And just like that whole idea of moving forward in life and in business um, is how I came up with that name. So anyway, it evolved along the way and um, spent a lot of time doing organic social and then realized how much I love doing paid advertising. It is its own beast and it's so much more fun to me anyway. Um, and I really love uh, guiding my clients through that. I love that story so much. I actually didn't know the backstory of your, the name for your business. So yeah. that was fun. Thank you for sharing that. I just love geeking out, talking to you about all things ads. I personally have not started yet running ads in my business and I can't wait for the day because I feel like I've been gathering so much knowledge from you for all these years that we've known each other and been good friends. Can you talk to our listeners a little bit about who should be running ads? When does it, when do you know, like it's the right time to start running ads? Sure. Um, I think at the very basics of it, if you have an offer that you are really ready to sell, you should be running ads. Um, whether that offer is an online course that you've created, even if it's a service that you provide, um, or if it's like a digital product that you sell off of a website or like Etsy or Teachers Pay Teachers or um, or you just have, a like I said, like a course or a coaching program. Um, basically, if you have something to sell, you could be running ads. Now, how you go about doing that and what type of ads you should be running, it varies quite a bit. Um, and budget wise, like it doesn't always have to be expensive. So um so yeah, that's essentially who should be running ads. I think anybody that has an offer to sell. 
Is there anything like that they need to be a certain point in having the offer? Like, do you recommend that people have already launched the offer that they've heard from their audience that they know that it's successfully selling organically before running ads? Oh yeah. That is also a very good point. Yes. And, um, so the way I look at it is, um, you can be building, you could really be building an, an audience and an affinity for your brand and what you're doing and just like an awareness. And those are the kinds of ads where I'd say, if you have any sort of thing running or like a website, um, or just a simple offer, but say you're in the situation where you do, you have a course, you've built it out, you've launched a couple times organically, same if you have a coaching program and you've already launched it a couple times, maybe organically, you know that it is, it is a validated offer, you know, it works um, and you know that people want it. Um, Then I would say that is a really great time to kind of move into running ads to those types of offers really put some fuel on that fire um, out to more people. Absolutely. I love that. So then who would you say, do you ever see like people who shouldn't be running ads and they are? Yeah. You know, I, um, I, well, so a couple, a couple things. One is that when someone runs an ad and they don't have their funnel figured out, So, um, you kind of have to have a call to action. Like there has to be a whole reason why you're running ads essentially. Um, now you can run ads that are just like for clicks and followers. That's fine. But, um, if you're ever trying to run an ad to, um, to a course, but you don't have a sales page built out or you don't have a website or you don't have like any, anything on the back end for them to funnel down to though, that is a, that's a mistake. (laughs) That's not a good idea. Um, and I will also say I have been on calls with people who want to hire me and I actually say no, you know, because really it's, it, what happens is, is a lot of times if you haven't flushed out your idea and your offer, and like I already mentioned, running it a couple times organically, if you haven't flushed that out, you will spend money and you will get zero results. And it's really frustrating. And so, so I have asked, like, I remember once I was talking to this wonderful woman who was, a, she was a piano teacher and she just was so passionate about building out a course for, to teach um, to teach piano, but in a, it was like with a certain niche. And I just, I was so honest. I had to be honest with her. I said, I really think you need to, um, work through this first before you hire someone like me or even really run an ad. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my long about way of answering that question. I think that's so important too, though. I mean, I know I say no to clients, as well, or potential clients as well, when they come to me and they're not ready for my services, because a lot of times the, my perfect fit clients, they have a business they're already in. They've been, their offers validated. They know they're ready to invest in having a website that truly reflects who they are and how they want to show up online. A lot of people, if they're just starting out, I'm not a good fit for them because I don't believe that someone when they're first starting out and figuring out their online business should be investing $10,000 in a website. Mm -hmm. They need to figure out their offer and go get the clients first, which is actually why I have the DIY website launch kit now. So they can go have kind of a starter website. Yeah. You have to figure, because there's going to be so many iterations. I know my business has had so many different iterations of how I offer services, what services I offer. Like it it evolves as our businesses grow and as we change. And that totally makes sense. And, And even on that, you know, you said, you know, investing and just using those words, like, um, there, there's like also a mindset, I think that comes along with, with being willing to spend the money to make the money. Like, for example, you know, would you be okay to spend a a hundred dollars a day? Like that's where I would like at a minimum start anybody. 
um, or recommend to start anybody a hundred dollars a day, like for a campaign that would be to like, um, a webinar or a, um, a course that you're selling anything like that. And that is just so beyond, you know, so beyond the idea or, or like, that's, that's like another huge indication when I know someone isn't ready. When I say, okay, a launch would, if you want to launch your ads, or if you want to do this launch and you have, and you want to run ads, usually you would run ads for about 10 days, expect to spend $2,000 just in ad spend. And if they balk at that, then that makes me feel like they're not ready because there's more than just, um, there, it, there's more than just like seeing these instant results. Like you also need to know your conversion rates beyond that. And some, those clues of like knowing, of having that confidence of knowing that you're going to make your money back. And again, that's why you prove your offer before you launch it or before you use ads, because you do want to make your money back. I mean, you want the whole point of running ads is to put some money in so that you make more back. (laughs) So anyway, yeah, when when that teeter tottering becomes uneven, if teeter totter is the right word, I'm not sure. But, you know, if that if that's all not really proven yet, then it gets very nervous and you have to be willing to risk, say, $2,000, either be mentally willing to let go of that and see what happens or prove your offer and have confidence that you know you're going to make your money back in ad spend. Does that make sense? It does make sense because again, it goes back to also like you can run ads, but if you don't have that funnel piece, like you can have ads running where the ads doing their thing, it's bringing more traffic to the website, to the landing page. But then if that landing page has unclear messaging, if the checkout button doesn't work, if the sign up, if they go and sign up for the freebie and nothing ever gets delivered to their inbox. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are all pieces of the puzzle that have to be working for the whole ecosystem to work. Yes. Very true. Yep. Exactly. So there's, there's just a lot of pieces that play an active role in, in r- having the business and ha- running ads successfully. It's not just about like the ad, there's more to mm-hmm. it than that. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's all that back end stuff. So I put, po- when I post on social media, it always is like, would you like to boost this? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, and I think boost, I always think back to like Mario Kart where you're like hit the boost button or like the boost yeah. turtle or something, shall I go fast? Or sure. The mushroom. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Um, can we talk like, should we be doing that? Well, I think, I think that that depends on your objective in uh, basically your objective. I, I, you know, that's probably the best word to describe it. Um, So let's say, let's say that you're thinking about your marketing strategy and you are doing your organic social media posts and you have, um, you're really trying to build an audience really there, like followers, people who are engaged with your account, um, all that sort of thing, which by the way, you can tie into your ads down the road, um, You can choose to boost, but it's setting expectations and the expectations would be you're not, do not boost if you want to sell them something. Boost works the best to just really highlight and enhance your organic posts. So, um, for example, you could boost um, to get more engagement on a reel that you did. Um, maybe the reel is more evergreen or is kind of warming people up to something that you're working towards down the road of a launch or something along those lines. You could choose the boost and you will get more people looking at it. Now, the question is, are they the right people looking at it? Um and you have limited capabilities, finding the right people is important. Um, And that's why I'm always encouraging people to use the ads manager, 
the business side of Facebook to, to if you're going to put money in it. That makes sense because then you can track it better. And yeah, that too. Be and you get the right people because you yeah. the targeting is so much more detailed. Yep. I love that. When someone is first, like, like, what are the steps people need to make sure they have in place? Like I try to always tell clients, even if you're not ready to run ads right now, cause I'm like, I'm not an ads person. I have mm-hmm. someone I can, I'll send you over to Amanda, but t- I tell them like from the beginning, get a Facebook pixel on mm-hmm. your website, have that tracking so that you can later have that data. That's been going in the running in the background. Is there any other steps that people you always recommend have in place? Well, to, yes, definitely. If the, that pixel is the biggest thing. So, um, but to get the pixel, those steps you need to take to actually get that would be setting up a business manager account. And for example, so you, you cannot run ads from a personal page, right? So, but you need to use your personal page to set up a business account. And under that business account manages all your assets and things like that. That would include your business page, your Instagram account and all that and your pixel. So that even before you have the pixel, you do need to set up a business account. And if you ever, um, if you're kind of stuck on that, you can join my free group. I actually have several very up-to-date tutorials um, on how to actually set that up. Oh, that's so cool. I know. Oh, and my Facebook group, if you want to join just Google or not Google, but Facebook search, uh, ads chat with Amanda, and you can go straight to, um, the group. I'd love to have you let me know you came from this podcast too. <laughs> anyway, I, I'll put that in the show notes to the link. Okay, for. cool. Yeah. I have a, t- I have a tutorial in there, um, that really is just like a step-by-step walkthrough of how to set that up. So then getting that pixel on your website is super important. And let me tell you why this matters. You can go back 180 days of data to, if you want to send what we would call a retargeting ad um, to um, an offer. So if you're launching something new, you can make sure your ad is put in front of everybody that visited your website in the last 180 days. So that you cannot do with boost. (laughs) So that's again, another reason why you should be using business manager and ad account, but yeah. So that is an example of why I'm always like, get that pixel on there, get the pixel on that website. (laughs) Even if you're not going to run ads, just get it there. Cause you never know. Do you recommend, I, as you know, I build WordPress websites um, and I, a lot of times will use a plugin to connect to the pixel. Do you recommend using a plugin? Do you recommend hard coding the pixel just into the code of the website? And if you, if it is a plugin, is there a certain plugin you recommend? Yes. There's two plugins. One would be the meta for Facebook or meta for WordPress. Sorry. Meta for WordPress. That's the first thing you do is you connect that. And then the second thing is pixel your site. That's the name of it. I've tried a few other plugins uh, with other clients and I I, I don't like them. They don't work very well. Pixel your site is amazing. Um, Super easy. Connects right up to the back end of Facebook and his tutorials just, they're very simple. They make sense. If you ever have questions, you know, he's got a bunch of knowledge base, you know, tutorials in there. It's great. So you're not really left high and dry. So with, um, with Google analytics, I always recommend a plugin called site kit, which is created by Google. Cause I'm like, let's keep Google happy. We want to keep the Google happy. Um, and it's really cool because once you connect it, it will literally walk you through setting up. It kind of auto does it on the back end. Does, mm-hmm. does pixel your site do that or. Yeah. Um, you literally copy paste two things. You copy paste your pixel and then, a, a you generate an access code in Facebook and uh, in your ad account and you co- generate the code, click copy, paste it in the pixel, your site, and that's it. Cool. So first step is go set up the business account, ads account, and get that pixel created. Second step is download the plugin and connect it there. The two plugins. You got to have, 
face or meta for fit for WordPress and pixel your site. You put both the plugins on. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. interesting. Actually, I, I mean, actually you don't have to have both of them. I'm just kind of thinking through this here. I always do both with my, my private clients, but you know, I guess that goes along where you are in that journey, right? If you're just at the beginning journey, it's, you're right. And I should have been clear on that. If you're where you're at, it totally matters. So if you're just going for the basics here, like you just need that base, get that code on there. Mm -hmm. It's meta for WordPress. And that's, it's very simple. And that is literally just putting your pixel ID in there. (laughs) Sorry. I, Facebook ads can be like this, like it, it, you can go down so many rabbit holes. <laughs> so I have to pull myself back sometimes and remember what, 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 what is the audience here? <laughs> Who are we talking to? So anyway, everyone has a little extra information too. I, it took me forever. The last time I went to set up a Facebook pixel account for a client and I, we, we were doing it together and everything had moved around since the last time I had set one up because that's not something I typically do with clients. And I was like, this is so way over my head at this point because they moved everything around and changed it all from when I had last. Yep. That and they're going to be crazy. changing it again too, but hopefully in a good way. Let's see. It is May, 2023. Um, so I think in the next couple of weeks, maybe months, they're going to be making it easier for people to set it up. Like right now it's, mm-hmm. it's a lot of steps. Um, which is why I created that, you know, the tutorial, but, um, yeah, they're going to be making a lot of things easier when Apple updated their operating system a couple years ago, it just threw everybody for a loop on the advertising side of things. And so, um, it's been a rocky few years of, of workarounds and updates to the back end and the API and all that. And so they're finally getting to a point where they can do, they're not back to how it used to be pre-2020, 2021. Um, but it's it's getting better for us advertisers, that is. And I think it's getting better for the users too, because um, you know, you should hopefully see a good advertiser is going to make sure your ad is put in front of you that relates to you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's hopefully getting better. I hope so. Cause yeah, it was very confusing last time I was in there looking around. So I know some people I've heard this before and they're like, I ran ads before. I feel like it was a waste of money. How do people make sure that it's worth their time? That's a really good question to make sure it's worth your time, which we've already talked about this a little bit, having that proven offer, that's definitely number one key indicator that it's worth your time. When you are 100% ready to have a huge flow of traffic coming to your site, you are 100% ready. Um, you, you know, though, that is, those are the the indications that you are ready to run ads. I love that. And so how does someone get started? If they're like, I have that, I have this offer. I'm it's validated. I have people coming in. I just need to get it out in front of more people. Yeah. How do they get started? Well, they contact me. (laughs) Um, they get started. Um, I love it. I'll say this. I love it when people come to me, and are wanting to hire me, but have already run ads on their own and have a really good taste. So of, of what it takes to run a campaign. So I would say that the next step is when you're ready is to learn how to run your campaigns on your own. Now that's not to say that you can't get a little help and that's uh, also where I can help with that. Um, I literally just launched, um, my momentum up ads club, which is a lovely little hybrid course and coaching program. So that way, you know, you've got 
you know, the course with all the details of how to actually run these ads for your offers. And then paired with um, very regular coaching calls where we can, you can ask questions and, uh, and get hot seats and look at, let's look at your ads, that kind of thing and get extra training. And I really feel like pairing those together makes it so much more accessible for people that are just getting started. Then when you blow up because you're running amazing, great, awesome, optimized ads and you're making loads of money, (laughs) you can come and you can hire me. I love that so much. I love that you found a way to take kind of the DIY side of it of a course where here's how you do it. And then also add in that done with you where you're going to give feedback and get your eyes on it. And people can go with questions. Cause I know like for me, I'm, I get tired of doing courses because I have questions. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to do a course anymore. I just want to be able to ask my questions and have access to someone who is an expert and can give me either feedback, answer my questions, all those things. Cause I'm at a place in my business where that to me is way more valuable because I don't have the time to just figure it all out on my own. Do any of us have the time? I mean, we really, none of us do, Uh, but you know, sometimes you have to, and that's a great solution. If you have to, if you're in that position of having to figure that out. Yeah. I love that. I love that you've created that offer and I will link that up as well. Thank you. you. Yeah, I do have other offers. You know, I have my ads accelerated, which is somewhat like a VIP day option where, you know, if you really do not have the time, um, you do have the desire to manage these yourself. Um, This is kind of like an in-between of, you know, the complete DIY and the full management. And if you just really need to get your campaign, your you know, this business manager set up, you just don't want to mess with it. Um, get a campaign campaign or two running um, and then be on your way. I, I also have an, a program for that as well. And that's kind of like that done with you as opposed to the done for you. So I, I really love doing that. And of course, I always give ac- extra access to the group coaching and things like that if if we go that route. Love that. Love it so much. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about the tech side of your business. I was your project. So let me back up a number of years ago, we got to meet, we were in a program together and we were in a mastermind and then we got to go in person and meet up at a retreat together. And then I think it was the following year we got, you and I got on call. Cause you said, I just, my website needs some help. and. I was so excited that we got to, my team and I got together and we created this just amazing website for you that I'm so happy with. Um, It was awesome. I love it. I love my website and my branding. So can we kind of back up a little bit and can we talk about sort of the evolution of the website? Um, When you first started, did you hire out your website and branding or did you DIY it? Can we talk a little bit about that journey for you? I'd love to talk about this. Okay. Yes. A uh, total DIY. Um, actually, no, it goes back further than that. Way back when I first started, I did pay a WordPress designer to do, do my branding and, and my business had just evolved. And like you said, it had so many different iterations along the way. And when, and so I just decided to cancel that whole thing and I didn't want to learn WordPress. I don't know why I thought it was difficult, but I did at the time. So I went over to Wix and which is more of that templatized type of a thing. And so I had DIY'd it just a ton, like kind of re reworked my logos, you know, a little bit. And anyway, it was just not feeling me anymore. And it really never was. It felt me at the time when I paid that other designer to do it. And then, it, and then I did it and it didn't feel like me. Isn't that funny? Like you would think, oh, I could do a better job. <laughs> oh, it's not my wheelhouse. <laughs> It's um, hard. It's hard to do your yeah. own stuff because yeah. you're so close to it. Yeah. Oh, tell me about it. And so um even with my own ads, like I really struggle with that too. I it's it's wild. So anyway, um so 
after that retreat that we talked about, that you talked about, um, I had made some connections that, um, through other people in that retreat. And then it was just kind of like, a, a what's snowball? Like things just started snowballing as far as bringing on new clients and my business just exploded. Like it was a breakout year for me. And I knew that that's what was happening early on. And I knew I wanted to spend, invest in my website and it, boy, did it pay off. It totally paid off. So yeah, um, that I'll go that far. And then, yeah, <laughs> cause I think that answers your question too. It does. I love, I love hearing the evolution of people's tech and their yeah. websites. I think, I mean, my first website was not anything to be excited about. It was, it was hard. It was hard to figure out what, how to put everything on there and the copy. I know I've, I've, always been very transparent that I hired out my copy to the fabulous Nicole Kepik, who was mm -hmm. on the show at the, in the beginning, I had her come on the show. Um, I know she did your copy for your website and she's just, she's very good. He is very good. Can I also say one other thing that just occurred to me when you're talking the difference between you and your team and that other web WordPress designer, they owned all their stuff. And that's why I went to Wix because I couldn't make any updates on my own. And that is something that you do different. And I really appreciate that. I am by far not a pro on the tech or anything like that, but you gave me the tools I need to be able to make some of these minor updates that really aren't a big deal, but I never had access to that. Like it was like something like with their proprietary template that they never let, I never had access to. So anyway, it's just a real bonus point for you and your team. <laughs> you know, I will say this, this is a thing I see a lot. It's a thing that I hear also as like the horror stories of people dealing with people who've hired web developers, web designers, because they don't get access. And I have very strong beliefs against that way of doing business. I believe my clients should be empowered to be able to go in and make changes. That being said, I have plenty of clients who are like, I don't ever want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm still going to give you the tools and the training in case you or someone on your team wants to, or you're more than welcome to hire me to come back and make any changes, updates, anything like that. But I am, you know, I don't host for my clients. I recommend, you know, good hosting for them. I do have them add me as a collaborator. So I have access to things. But no, I believe that my clients need to be, have full ownership of their website. Also, like, what if something happened to me? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's so true. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's surprising yeah. to me how often I hear that story. But really, yeah, it's funny because I don't think we've ever talked about that. I don't, mm. I don't think we've ever talked about that. So yeah, it, it maybe because it just happened so long ago and I'd already trashed it, but um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's, it's such an interesting, I, I didn't know your position. I think I probably inherently knew because the way you like the, what you were telling me, what I was going to get from the service. I think I just inherently knew that I was going to get to do those edits that I wanted may it, you know, that I had told you I didn't have before. So, yeah, I have, um, a client who I did not build her website, but she's on my maintenance plan. Um, the developer who originally developed her website years ago is no longer doing that sort of work. And so I, we met through um, a program and I, now I manage her site and do updates for her. And it was something as simple as just changing out the LinkedIn address. And mm -hmm. that's all she needed me to change out. Cause she had changed her LinkedIn URL mm -hmm. to be a little more niche specific. And I went and digging around on her website and it was somewhere like hard coded and because I didn't build the website, you're kind of going into something someone else built and you're searching around this haystack for a needle. Mm -hmm. And so I said to her, you know, can you go back to the developer and just ask him, where is it? <laughs> and because yeah. it also was, it was an unsolvable problem. It was, you know, I needed to solve the problem. I type a like problem solving. I just want to know. I did find a workaround where I could do a search and replace and change it out. But that to me was not good enough. I wanted to know where it was. Mm -hmm. So she went back to the developer and asked, and he came back and said, I can either make the change and it'll be however much money, or I can create a video and show you 
how to make the change. And I'm going to, and it was double the price. Hmm. And that just felt so incredibly ick to me. And I'm like, he's putting it on lockdown. Like you should be able to change the link. To something well, yeah. And that was exactly why I left because I was like, I just need some links changed. Like I updated my Instagram, like just silly things. And I'm like, you want like $500 for that? I'm like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I'm already paying you. I don't know. I just didn't, I don't know. I just was, I, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry. So one of the things that, as you know, because we Voxer chat almost every day, <laughs> um, I love celebrating wins. And so I would love to know what is something that we can celebrate that you've done recently that you're really proud of yourself? Oh, okay. Well, I would say I literally just yesterday did my very first paid ads perfection masterclass. And that was talk about a tech hurdle. I mean, that was an interesting thing to to encounter, um, launching or really just launching anything. Um, this is the first time, like I've officially launched something. I did it ironically enough, organically, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which I'm not going to be shy to say that I, I did this organically. I had 60 people sign up for my webinar, or my masterclass, and all the other results are yet to be seen. I have gotten sales already to the ads club, which is great. Um, but I'm also like mid launch right now as we speak. So I don't really have any like final results, but to me, that was like a huge win that I could um, have, you know, that I, first of all, got this entire funnel set up. Um, I did have help obviously, um, with, I have a team as well that helped me, but, um, but just that, you know, uh, doing this whole, it just being, I'm basically being in the shoes of my clients right now in doing my own thing. I will be running ads to this next month <laughs> when I do this next time. But, um, I definitely feel like that's a huge win for me. I'm really proud of myself. That is a huge win. And yeah, yeah. Congratulations. I am so proud of you. Cause yeah, it's been really fun for me being along on the journey. Um, I was on for at least part of the webinar yesterday Mm -hmm. and it was amazing. And I'm just so excited to be able to kind of have a backseat and and I, I love watching, I love watching all my friends succeed. Like it just, <laughs> it brings me so much joy, friends and clients. I mean, well, we love to see you succeed too, Laura. Oh, We're just you. as big fans of you as you are of us. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. We are getting close to our time. Amanda, I could talk to you all day. I know. Um, <laughs> I I should have scheduled a longer podcast episode for us <laughs> just because I know how much I enjoy chatting with you. I would love to know what is something you are doing different in your industry where you're kind of making waves and doing things a little different than other people. I didn't get to think about this question before you. Well, here's how I feel I do things a bit different. I... (laughs) I feel like, I don't know how to say this right, but I feel like I actually kind of (laughs) care. I feel like there's a lot of, there is so much hustle and bro out there, if you know what I mean by bro, Mm -hmm. that, um, and, and, and not enough of like, someone who actually cares and is going to pay attention to their client or care enough to make sure that, you know, the client is getting what they need or care enough to keep up to date with current trends. Um, I guess I say that because I see it all the time when clients come to me and they're like, well, someone told me to do it this way. And it's just like, quite frankly, crap. And (laughs) You're just like, oh, that's such a bummer. Or someone comes to me and they're like, I feel like I was totally ignored by my ads manager and I didn't get 
you know, you know, and, and that's kind of like why I say like, it's even in the intro, like the way you introduced me, like I am a boutique ads agency and I am that way because I don't plan on scaling so large that I'm not, I, I want to scale, obviously, like I'm a business owner. I want to make money, but also I care about my clients and I feel like that that makes a really big difference. I care that they're successful um, even when they leave because they're maybe moving in a different direction. I don't care. I still care. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's how I think that I am different than some of the larger agencies out there. I don't do rinse and repeat. There is some templates that I use, but it is everything is always customized and um, put together for the best interest of the client's goals. So, yeah. I love that so much. <laughs> I feel like that's, I get some, a lot of feedback from my clients. That's something that is different that they've experienced with me is that I care so much about the success of my clients. And yeah. you, it's, it's kind of sad that that's something that makes us stand out because shouldn't everyone care? <laughs> yes, they should, but they don't. So, so anyway, yeah, it's a different world, this online world, you know, um, when you don't see people face to face anymore, um, then it just, you know, it, it adds a level of anonymity, you know, that we, we see that just in social media in general. Um, but, you know, bringing that face to face in, in real life, in real business, um, but online at the same time, that's the goal. I love that. Okay. I have one final question for you today before we wrap this up. And that is what is one piece of advice you would give to someone when they're first starting out in their business that would help them be bolder, be louder and make waves in business? I would say that taking a risk, taking risks and putting yourself out there, um, making connections and being consistent with people is probably, I think the biggest way to make waves. I think you stand out among, among the crowd by simply following up. Um, you stand out among the crowd and you make a big difference when you show you care, right? Stuff like that. So, yeah. I love that so, so much. Amanda, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Can you tell our listeners where they can find you online and come hang out with you? Well, you can see my beautifully, <laughs> my beautiful created website um, at momentumupmarketing.com. You can find me on Instagram at momentum.up.marketing. And Facebook, you can find me at Momentum of Marketing, but then obviously I would love uh, anyone interested in just dipping their toe in Facebook ads to join my free Facebook group, which is Ads Chat with Amanda. Love that. I will link that all up in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here today. This was so much fun. Thanks, Laura. I had a blast. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to check out the show notes at lauracomark.com forward slash podcast. And if you're ready to turn your website into a marketing machine, get more sales, save time, and simplify the back end of your business, grab my free resource, Power Integrations, for your website. Head on over to lauracomark.com forward slash power. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe. And also, I'll just love you forever if you leave me a review. It helps get this podcast in front of other people that can help inspire. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next week. Bye now.